Hey, good morning. This is Steve Stites, Chief Medical Officer here at the University of Kansas Health System, broadcasting live with you from the Dolph Simons Family Studio here at the University of Kansas Hospital. We are privileged to have the Honorable Kansas City Mayor Quinton Lucas as our guest today. Mayor, welcome back. It is a delight to have you back. Thanks for all your great work and great service. And yes, we will ask how baby Bennett and mom are doing, as well as a few other questions in just a few minutes. But first, Hawkeye, where's the unicorn? Where's the cow? Where's the horsey behind you? I, 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 where are you? You're you're not you're you're on a different planet no. yeah no it's colorado it's not a different planet um just here vacation gonna be doing some outdoor stuff uh zip lining hiking hopefully we'll meet up with our our excellent physician dr chris brown maybe later today uh, awesome he's out here as well so it should be fun but again people are wanting to get out and vacation if you can do things outdoors it's gonna be uh it's gonna be much healthier and it will keep you protected and safe as well. So, and so you're still representing. You got your KU shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> of course, of course. There's the J. Always. All right. So, how are we doing? How are the numbers, man? And thanks for being part of the program again. How are, how are we doing there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hayes has two active infections, and we here at the health system have 11 active infections with two in the ICU one on the ventilator, still have 10 additional in that recovery period. So the numbers are, are holding steady, um, certainly not going higher. We have seen them higher recently, uh, but if we can keep them as low as possible, again, that's always going to be the best for everybody. It is, you know, and, and so we had a chief medical officer call yesterday, and I think we're all getting just a little twitchy about what's going on in Springfield mm -hmm. around the Delta variant, especially in those counties where the people are, weren't, organ, uh, weren't vaccinated, reports coming out of Springfield of, Cox and other hospitals being full and having to actually divert patients to other facilities around because they didn't have beds for COVID-19 patients. And that we haven't heard that for almost six months, or at least it feels like it's been six months. And and that 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 was a little concern. It made us all just a little nervous to listen to that. And and so um, you know, I and, and so when we went around the horn yesterday for all the hospitals, everybody's either holding steady. A few hospitals were down, most had kind of doubled or tripled their COVID census, but they were still relatively low numbers compared to last. November, but higher than what we've had on the call in a while. What are you hearing out there, Hawk? You know, it, it's the same thing. Um, I think in the uh, the urban areas, the numbers really aren't, aren't too bad as far as hospitalizations. Uh, in the more rural areas where there's been less vaccine uptake, I think that is the key. Uh, this continues to be a behavioral disease. We talked about that early on with the behaviors of meeting in small groups or meeting in large groups indoors, doing those things. We know that with now lessened restrictions and really an opening up, um, that is a behavioral thing. Again, doing things outdoors is going to be better, but the other big component of the behavioral issue is the vaccine uptake and deciding to get the vaccine. We know that the vaccine offers protection even against Delta variant, protection against the whole spectrum of disease, including the disease that makes you ill enough to go to the hospital or have to go to the ICU. Right, and I think in Springfield they were saying that up as, as many as 90%, and I don't know how they verified that data, nor where the data came from. It's just a quote from a hospital CEO. Who trusts hospital CEOs, really? It's like CMOs. Who, tar, who trusts those people? Mm -hmm. But that as many as 90% of their cases have been the Delta variant. And so I think we just have to recognize the Delta and the other variants are tend to be more transmissible than the original Wuhan strain. And yet at that point, Wuhan is still very transmissible, and what we know is if you're vaccinated, it protects against all of those. One other quick thing today, the CDC advisory panel meets for those who are 12 about um, possible myocarditis and those who are younger, between 12 and 24 years of age, especially between 12 and 18 years of age. There have been about 700 cases altogether, maybe 1,000 uh, reported of myocarditis, although very mild, self-limited. I think 11 people are still hospitalized or young yeah. people are hospitalized with it out of the approximately 12 or 13 million who have actually had the vaccine who are under the age of 18. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think we continue to say the disease, COVID-19, is going to put you more at risk of any of these complications that, uh, that we have seen from the vaccine. The vaccine still continue to be safe. Um, I feel privileged and thankful that I've gotten it and my children have gotten it. Um, we know that there are out there, there, there are these side effects. Luckily, this one does seem to be uh, fairly transient and self-resolving. Um, so we'll just kind of wait for the final word on that. But we still need to get uh, people vaccinated. They continue to be safe. 
Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And what we know is that COVID-19 is not safe. The Delta variant is not safe. And the average hospitalization age in Springfield is 42. 42. Yeah. That's a lot younger than what we saw before. And so I think it just demonstrates that it is a young and an old disease. And the second thing is you don't have to be sick to get long haul. We're going to be talking about long haul more mm -hmm. this week. That is truly a real problem. One person who is hopefully staying very safe at home yes. at home is Bennett. Uh, <laughs> so how is Bennett doing, Mayor? He is doing wonderfully well. Uh, he was born here uh, at KU Hospital, and so I feel like uh, he was maybe an early viewer of this program. I think that's exactly right. <laughs> he had to be, right? Well, you know, helping those Today. ratings out. But well, we're pretty cool people, you know. We <laughs> exactly. want, people want to see what we're doing. No, <laughs> he, was, he, is, he is doing great. He is very healthy. He was born a little early, but we, we've had wonderful care. And, uh, you know, we're getting used to waking up every few hours to uh, make sure all is okay in his world. That's awesome. How are mom and dad doing? You know what? My wife is a saint. I, I you know, I, I have sisters with a lot of children. One of my sisters has six, so I'd been around babies before. But until you really live with one every day. It's a day, different story, isn't it? It is a very different story. And by the way, I commend all of you with more than one child. <laughs> because uh, about two months in, I'm like, this is wonderful, beautiful. How do you double the work? But, uh, yeah. You know, everybody's doing well and has allowed me to kind of balance my still fairly busy day job with the most important job of being a father. That is the most important job. Listen, when I went from my wife and I went from two to three kids. I said, dear, this is a problem. We're switching from a man to man to a zone defense. I don't know how this is going to work. Right. Those people are six. How do you do that? Oh, I can't exactly. imagine. I just can't imagine. Well, that's great. So, well, thanks for being back on our program again today. And we also want to thank you for, uh, for a recent honor given us by the Greater Kansas City. Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. Members dropped off 1,000 Jimmy John's. I do like Jimmy John's. <laughs> I love the bread. And McDonald's uh, 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 foods uh, for us and for our staff here at KU. That was a really nice thing. So we want to thank, uh, uh, thank you for that. On a more serious note, yeah. though, even though we we're better off than we were, yeah. a few months ago, things could still be bumpy. Uh, we're clear clearly not out of the woods. How are the vaccination efforts going for Kansas City? You know, we are working hard, actually regionally, to make sure that we are, first of all, reducing and removing those barriers to entry for people getting vaccinated. I always broke up the vaccination groups into a very informal third. A third of people wanted the vaccine as soon as they could get it, right? A lot of us got our shots fairly quickly. Then there's this other third that, for whatever reason, hates vaccines, hates government. We'll keep talking to them. We'll keep working on them, really medical providers and others will have a good role in that for years to come probably. But there's this other amazing third in life yep. and we all know them and sometimes we're like that. Uh, and it's the folks that say, yeah, I really need to take care of that, but wait, I got a call or yeah, where do I go? And I think that's what we've been working, not just at Kansas City's health department, but all around the region, our friends in Wyandotte, Johnson counties in Kansas, Jackson County, Missouri, to make sure that we have uh, almost in flashing lights, here's an opportunity to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. It's at a convenient convenient place for you. You can go in, you can get your shots, reminding a lot of folks that now our young people can get shots too. And so I think we are seeing progress, but it is going to be a continuous campaign. And we've been through this before in this country, whether it was putting on seat belts, uh, cessation of smoking efforts, all these sorts of things that just say it's good for you. And I think that's going to be the, the next phase probably for all of us in government and, and in the PR world. Totally agree. It's, it's about keeping you safe then it's about keeping the people you love and care about safe. It's right. about keeping us all safe. And the only way we can do that is get more, more folks vaccinated. And I think you're right. It's a slog. I also just want to say I've been proud to be a Kansas City resident. Oh, and uh, you know, I was born and raised in this area. And so um, I think the core of four is you guys have just done amazing work. I think you've stayed really well connected. Um, and I think we should all be proud of the metropolitan area, the great work that's been done uh, by your office, by mm -hmm. you, and by Mayor Alvey, yeah. and by you know Jackson County, Johnson County, Wyandotte County, you know, Clay County, Platt County, whatever. Right. I, this, right. I'm proud to be here, and it's it, and so thank you for that. It, oh, thank it does you. make us it does make us feel good, and we know people are trying to keep the Chiefs and the Royals safe. And let's face it, we all want to get back out to well, the, the sports exactly complex right. or to sporting. You know, I will say this: that was so interesting. And, and whenever we think all of our efforts are working, I have a nephew who's in the Marine Corps. God love him. Got to see him a few weeks ago, and I said, "Have you gotten vaccinated yet?" And he's one of those as well. Well, I was going to wait and see. Yeah. And fortunately, I was able to say, "You knucklehead, while you're in town, yeah, let's go." 
arm. Just go do Give me your arm. Right. We've got a place mm -hmm. for you, and it is going to be more of that. And I so commend our health departments, particularly reaching out to populations we don't always reach. I was knocking doors on the west side of Kansas City, a predominantly Latino community, where we were walking around with the Guadalupe Centers to say, here are opportunities for you. Well, you'll see a lot more of that over the summer months, and certainly as long as this pandemic's around. Yeah, and I think that's outstanding, because this Delta variant's a little bit nervous. Yeah. No, no. How's the health department looking at that, and are you are you guys nervous about that uptick in, in cases? You know, we absolutely are. I appreciated your conversation at the beginning of this discussion. I mean, there are still people being hospitalized for mm -hmm. COVID-19. Sadly, there are still fatalities related to COVID-19, and this is something that we can truly avoid. And, and we are trying to say, as we've seen challenges with the variants, not just in our country, but I was reading this morning about not just challenges in India, but now in sub-Saharan Africa. Absolutely. Uh, and the fact that they are almost in this race to have vaccines get to people before you're seeing this. And you see effectiveness against some of our variants. And so what we say to that probably 55% of Kansas Cityans or so who are unvaccinated is this is how we can actually stop such a spread, stop an outbreak. And it continues to be. You don't want COVID. You know, we spent, no. and now we get to kind of have this chat removed from all the politics. Now it's not about rules and masks and what have you. Really, it's just do this thing to be safe, keep our communities safe, keep our children and our families safe. And uh, I think we will continue to work on that. But it's certainly a concern for us. It is a concern, and it's a challenge because, you know, even though we say it's safe, people say, well, the vaccines are too new. They've been rushed too much. I'm like, okay, right. guys, listen. About 2 billion doses have been given across the world around. 2 billion doses. And we're just not seeing people fall over dead from it. Now, on the other hand, if you watch the ads, and you see all the drug company ads that are out there, yeah. right? And you think, they, they, they think, how wonderful. Then they got to spend the next 30 seconds <laughs> scrolling through all their side effects, which they go through very rapidly, and they run through the scroll right. so fast you can't possibly see it. But the list of side effects is overwhelming. And so I have been a doctor, prescribing doctor, since 1986. Right. That's approximately a very long time. People, Don't shake your head, Hawkeye. <laughs> Stop that. But since 1986, yeah. and I tell you, I've written facts. I've written prescription for things that are they're tough and they are a lot of bad side effects and they make people sick. Vaccines save lives. They're not mm -hmm. going to kill you. I mean, this bit about people being afraid. I understand some hesitation. I don't understand the paranoia, yes. because you just at some point you have to have faith in something. If there is a lesson from this pandemic, it is that having faith is okay. And having faith in each other, having faith in science mm -hmm. is a good thing. But being part up of the being part of the made up news network, that is not helpful Absolutely. to us. Don't be part of the MUN. Right. You know, it is one of the most interesting things, and, and say what you will, and I don't always follow doctor's orders, but I usually try to. Neither do I. <laughs> and I I started wearing a mask pretty early. Right, and I, I and you look good. I think you did good. I think you look you, you look good in that mask. Well, you know, it, it helped cover a lot. Yeah, that's and for a lot of us, we didn't have to shave some days. It helped with the stubble. But you know, I would note that you know you start wearing a mask, you follow the rules, you do those sorts of things. I, I was blessed to never fall ill from COVID, although I certainly did a lot of things. I loved what you all said about masks. How you treat very ill people, right? All the folks time. with COVID all the time. But this is a way that you could make sure you stayed healthy. We didn't. And, we didn't see this spread in the hospital because right. we have masks right. on. And, and I think the vaccine is kind of that next step for folks. We can yeah. clearly share that if you just follow this bit of advice, it keeps you it keeps you safer and healthy. And at the end of the day, with everything else, all I know is I don't want to be sick. And that's what I told my Marine Corps nephew, brave young man. He's got that young man's yep. kind of energy. Yep. But I said, but do you want to be do you want to be down and out even for a few days? And, you know, I recognize that uh, he recognized that was important. And I I think, unfortunately, perhaps, we share that with each person now face-to-face. -face, it's going to take time, but I think it's a lesson that can be learned. And importantly, once you hit somebody in the group, then usually you can get the other, you know, kind of young, stubborn guys to say, oh, it's not such a crazy yeah, idea. Yeah. He's got it. I get it to you. Bet. How we do it. Right. Well, and I think I think it's going to be a different miss maker, too, once um, it receives FDA approval. Because I think we're going to see, and I think we'll be one of those folks. You're going to have to start looking at it and saying, you know, guys, I think we're going to have to require it of our folks here because, um, you know, the, the evidence is there. It's now been fully approved by the FDA. And at that point, I think that's a game changer for us. I really yeah, do. So, yeah, And I think that's coming. I think it's going to happen before, before all that much longer, honestly. So, All right, Jill, let's first see if there's any requests from reporters out there. Hey, Dr. Stites, it's Dan Cohen from 41 Action News. I wanted Hi, to gauge your concern uh, regarding the 4th of July holiday coming up. Um, 
and about gatherings among people who might not be vaccinated. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Dan, for that question. Mayor and I will take on this question. We'll ask Hawkeye, too. Um, you know what? I, I would say this. If you've not been vaccinated, the Delta variant is very real. It's clearly in the city, and it will be the dominant form of the, of the of virus here within weeks, if it's not already. And uh, it's more transmissible than the original variant in, in some of the others. So I think it's a real and present danger. I think if you're not vaccinated and you're indoors, there's a really good likelihood you're going to have to face a, a, the, the prospect of having COVID. And I think you just have to realize that because there's still widespread community transmission of this virus. But I think if you've been vaccinated, I think you can do a lot of good stuff, and then I'm not so nervous. I think what's gotten Springfield in trouble, and it, Springfield is in trouble again, um, is that so many people have been unvaccinated. And what it reveals is the weakness of a strategy of the wait-and-see approach. The, way, the, the problem is, are you going to wait and see what the vaccination's like, or are you going to wait and see what COVID's like? And I think that's the dilemma people face. So if you're vaccinated, I think you're a lot safer. Am I nervous about the 4th of July holiday? If you're inside, I'm nervous. If you're outside, yeah, I'm not so nervous. But if you go inside and you haven't been vaccinated, I think the chances are real. We'll see a bump uh, after that holiday. And I think we'll especially see that bump in areas that are not vaccinated. Hawkeye, thoughts? Yeah, you know, I, I totally agree. We've had this question now for a year and a half about different holidays. And last year it was Memorial Day when that started. We saw everybody down at the Ozarks. You know, we, we haven't really seen, uh, even in the era prior to the vaccine, that there's been a large uh, upsurge in general, say one or two weeks afterward. The big issue is if people are getting together, we know that they're traveling, so they're spreading around more. So it can also uh, cause then more um, uh, uh, introductions of, of the virus into other places maybe that didn't have it before. Uh, but you know, historically, we haven't been seeing so much of a big surge just a, a week or two weeks after that. But I think the more concern is the overall spread. If you are having people get together, come in from out of town, go back home, go other places, that, that is a large concern, especially if you are traveling to those areas that aren't as highly vaccinated as some of the other areas that, uh, that we've seen. Mayor. You know, a few different things I know we've done on the, the local government side. Certainly outdoor events, we see the difference with them. But indoors, we still have mask requirements at our community centers, uh, a number of our, our city-owned facilities, trying to encourage folks to continue to be that level of safe. If you're going to big exhibits in Kansas City, there's one at Union Station right mm, the now. The Auschwitz exhibit. Oh, that oh, looks I – mean, I'm, we're going, I think we have tickets in August. So, right. yeah. it, is, it, it is an exceptional exhibit. I recommend it for all. But I know they're still asking a lot of their visitors, the unvaccinated folks, to make sure you're wearing masks. I would see the holiday as an opportunity to encourage people, again, if you if you want to be out and about, particularly if you are going to other areas where you may not see the same vaccination activity, then I would encourage you to make sure you get vaccinated. And I, I try all the time to get through to our young people. Um, I love them going to our bars in Westport or, or for those of you in Lawrence or wherever else, sure. But, but make sure you're getting vaccinated before you're in the those very tight rooms, those tight quarters where we've seen, you know, a lot of things spread before. And we want to make sure the variant doesn't have the opportunity for an outbreak. Speaking of which, how has the reopening for Kansas City gone? Are businesses coming back? Is, is the economy lifting off? You know, it, it has gone, I think, fairly well. Uh, I think that there was this kind of pent-up energy for folks I to get too. back out yeah. and, and spend and be around each other. And a thing that I have been proud of is that people are largely still respectful, respectful of distance respectful of, of touching and embracing, mm -hmm. respectful of those that are, are still wearing masks. And, and thank you for doing that. And those folks who are still following rules that are right for them. So I think you are seeing that economic recovery we always knew could happen and, and we hoped would. But also, I think, um, some recognition of the fact that you're not totally out of the woods. You should still be safe. I was at a Juneteenth festival in Kansas City at 18th and Vine the other day. And folks are still, you know, when they came up for a picture, they said, I'm vaccinated with me, which I loved. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really is this sign that folks know how to reopen responsibly. I think that's so true. Remember what we say, live long and prosper. The V <laughs> is for vaccination. Uh, oh, other reporter questions. Yes. I know we have a couple on there. Nope, we're good. All right, so we have a lot of community questions. Um, I'm going to start with the ones that are kind of targeted toward the mayor and take advantage of you being here, and then we'll, if we have time, we'll do some of the others. All right. Isaac says, here's a question I have for Mayor Q. He says, 
I love how Casey has come up with the expanded outdoor dining in some areas, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. Westport, in response to COVID. His question is, will this still be around after the pandemic is over? He said, I hope so. Yeah. Well, a few things that we've learned from uh, this pandemic were that there are ways to make sure everybody is safer all the time. Mm -hmm. um, our health director, Dr. Rex Archer, and I have talked a lot about past outbreaks, concerns with influenza, et cetera. And wait, wait, what influenza? <laughs> The, this year, right. right, right, because of all the things that are that, in place, we don't see influenza. That's exactly so, right. So there is a lesson learned, right? right? And, and there, there is much to learn about how we have distanced, but distanced in a, a respectable way, um, and made sure that businesses could still be open. So we absolutely plan to, in a way, make the plaza more like a plaza uh, long term, and to make sure that we're actually doing, I think, the important work necessary to address some of these issues long term. So, so yes, my hope is that these things do stay around. My hope is that we uh, continue to find ways that we can keep folks safe. And one thing I've seen a lot of is that people will probably keep their masks around for mm -hmm. when you're flying or if you're on the train or if you're on public transit. And that's a really positive addition for us long term, I even if there is not right. a mandate to do so. Well, I think one of the questions being we ask all the time in the hospitals, are we ever going to go mask free in clinical areas again? I'm not sure we are, yeah. because what we have seen such less transmission, even in the hospital of influenza from a patient to a caregiver or from our, one of our team over to a patient or to each other. I mean, our rates of absenteeism this year drop like a rock. And so, I mean, if you once we, not including COVID, obviously, right. obviously, but, but I think I think we, we were so impressed by the impact it had on our patient safety. I, I'm not sure that we're going to be going maskless inside mm -hmm. the hospital. Now, in administrative areas, that's a different question, but it's really patient care areas. I think we may stick with it. I think, there's a, I think we have all learned important lessons here, and we've learned that distancing does really work. Again, the rules of infection control, they travel with you wherever you go, they help keep you safe. Christy wants to know, she goes, I'm a labor organizer for retail workers. We have a lot of workers who refuse to get vaccinated despite how they be have been affected, some of them greatly. Many of them pass on disinformation and misinformation. How do we educate them to get vaccinated? You know, that wow. is a very important question. <laughs> that's a great and that's question. That's something that we have been working with uh, for some time. I think that our first step has always been big public education campaigns, television, social media being very important to try to just get the truth out there. The other thing that we have to do sometimes is dispel those those false narratives. Folks that are, are saying things about the vaccine that just very simply are not true. I think the other approach that we have is actually making sure, and, and we're working on this ahead, actually having vaccine opportunities en masse for our, our for example, our, our food and commercial workers, making sure that we're having vaccination opportunities for those in the restaurant industry. So it almost forces that level of conversation that we don't always get. And so those are the steps that we're taking soon. We will continue to push that. But yeah, it, there is just, and I'm on social media, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, and see all of the stuff that comes out there. I think the best thing that we can do is to make sure that we are still sharing the truth, and usually that can weigh out on some of the falsehoods you see around. Hawkeye, okay, I, I saw you shaking your head. Pop in there. Yeah, I agree. There is going to be uh, a lot of misinformation. There has been. There continues to be, and it's it's taking different approaches uh, to uh, address those things and, and really just try to get uh, people uh, vaccinated. We know that you would think that if somebody has been uh, infected and affected by COVID, either themselves or the friend or family member, that would encourage them to say, I don't want to be like that, or I want to prevent this in the future, so I'm going to get vaccinated. So there are various ways to go about it. And, um, you know, we just got to keep giving that message. You know, here's what I would say <clears throat> to your point about misinformation. We coined a term earlier this week. Anybody who watches the program regularly knows that I love acronyms. Ruri, don't be a Ruri. You ask, is that a new household insect? No, <laughs> it is a rumor reporter. Yeah. And remember that Google, while incredibly convenient and helpful, is not a paragon of truth. Rather, where do you go to find the real information and not the misinformation about things, all things medical and scientific? Well, you know, go to the people who are not going to flap jack you. We're not going to flap our arms and jack with the truth. Go to folks. Go to places like the New England Journal of Medicine where all the COVID-19 reporting is free and open to the public. Come to this program. Come to places where we're going to try and be honest and tell you what we know and what we don't know. And here's the truth. Vaccines are safe. 
COVID is not safe. And the long haul syndrome, which you're gonna hear about for two patients tomorrow, two of our employees who are also patients, uh, the long haul syndrome is not safe and it is not fun. Mm -hmm. So don't set yourself up for failure by listening to falsehoods and innuendo. Don't be a Ruri. Be someone who's going to try and find the truth and go out and reach out and get the real information from sources that you can trust. So selfish is going to sources that or has a person who's a politician who is citing a source that you should be able to trust, but maybe isn't citing it correctly. The question is help. A local politician is telling their followers the WHO does not recommend COVID vaccines Mm -hmm. for children under 18. She cites an article in the Kansas, Missouri Sentinel. Please explain where this could be construed as accurate advice by the WHO. Well, that's, I think, WHO is World Health Organization, Hawkeye. What do you think? I see you looking something up. You're checking it out. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. I, I don't know uh, if that's a blanket statement. I don't know <clears throat> if it's just we know that the World Health Organization, uh, one of their first major recommended vaccine, uh, vaccines was the AstraZeneca vaccine. That has not been approved in younger children. So I think we kind of need to look for some information and exactly uh, see uh, what that statement is and, and kind of tease out the truth there. Well, it is also maybe saying we have vaccine we're going to give to adults before we give it to kids. And so you check that out. I suspect that's what we're going to find out. It's not that the World Health Organization stands against vaccinating young people. It stands probably for right. trying to vaccinate adults first and those who are most at risk. So when you don't have a lot of vaccine, let's be honest. First of all, it is a bit of a moral embarrassment to me that yeah. the United States has vaccine expiring when the sub Saharan Africa and other parts around the country or the world are utterly at risk from the ravages yeah. of, of, of COVID-19. So I, I have a hard time with that one. Um, but having said that, the CDC, who I have great faith in, and I know people want to d- complain about Fauci. Look, folks, Fauci's been fantastic. This guy's led us through AIDS. He's led us through um, MERS. He's led us through other forms of SARS-CoV-1 and other things. Th- this guy, is he is the real deal. And, 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 and the truth is that early in the pandemic, we all are building that airplane while we flew it. We're trying to tell you the best, the most honest information we can. Are we going to all have a right? No. But frankly, we had a, most of it right. In fact, we had an impressive amount of it right when we knew so little uh, based upon the science and based upon what we knew from prior uh, uh, pandemics. So what I would say is that in the United States, with the plethora of vaccine, we have a lot of it, folks, that we have, and knowing how people are vulnerable, it makes sense to vaccinate people down to the age of 12. And I think by the end of the summer, we're going to be vaccinating much younger than that. So I, I believe that's why the World Health Organization probably, did you take it? Uh, did you see what they got there, Hawkeye? Yeah, I did. Uh, yep. So, I mean, they first say take whatever vaccine is available. Uh, Even if you've already had COVID-19, we know that that is cited as a reason why people don't get vaccinated. Uh, And it's important to get vaccinated as soon as possible once it's your turn. Obviously, for people uh, in the United States, as you said, we are very privileged. Really, anybody 16 and above can get it. Um, They say the vaccines are safe for most people aged 18 and older. And um, just as you said, children and adolescents, uh, less so compared to the adults because the risk of... uh, adverse outcomes is much worse for adults if they get COVID-19 compared to children. And we do understand that the World Health Organization caters to and delivers advice for the whole of the world. And they, a lot of places do not have, uh, are not as fortunate as us as having enough supply of vaccine. So that is the reason, but it doesn't mean that children Uh, you know, 16 and above or or 18 to 16 should not get vaccinated. Yeah, 12 and over, let's go get a vaccine in the United States. And by the way, let's make sure we send as much vaccine as possible around the world. When it comes out that infants are okay or that uh, six months and above or whatever, I think it'll probably be done either two or six months when the next, uh, when we, when the, sometime this fall, will you get va- Bennett vaccinated? Maybe? I absolutely will. Yeah. I, I, you know, to me and to the, the caller's question or to the writer's question, it is, I mean, you can trust the CDC, you can trust this health system, other health systems. That's where I've usually tried to get my advice. And even, for example, when I'm looking at something that's right or wrong with Bennett, if I get into 
into an internet rabbit hole and oh my god, oh my god. Be a thousand <laughs> different things. That's why <laughs> That's sometimes you'll just go to the KU Pediatrics site and they'll say, all right, calm down, call your physician if you have a question or something of the sort. And I would encourage that same thing here. So if you're seeing a lot of this misinformation out in the world, really, and if maybe you believe some of it, go to an, a more official source. You know, and if it's Mayor Lucas retweeting it or somebody else, don't trust us. Go to that <laughs> official source. Go to the hospital. Go to somebody at the CDC, and I think you'll have a chance to really see what the truth is. And, and that's the best way that I've looked to balance it over time as well. I trust you, Mayor. I think you're going to do the right thing, so I'm going to, I'm going to trust your tweets, too. So, <laughs> so just to say, just, you know, those chief medical officers around your community have done a great job, yeah. and I would just tell you that you are, we are blessed in Kansas City by the True. group we have, and we learned yesterday that one of my friends, Larry Botts, is retiring from Shiny yeah. Mission Medical he's Center. He's going to be back on, though, before he retires. Good thing. Yeah, all the CMOs man. are coming back on one more Yay. time. You all know, right. I have a question, which maybe Please. takes us out of line. People have yeah. asked politicians, kind of, how's this year been, health directors and all of that. What about for you? Uh, and what about for you? Uh, yeah, I would. Say, my wife would say this has been. I've been in, in the worst mood ever. <laughs> <laughs> for more than a year. Yeah, for more than a year. No, she said it's been a hard year. It, it's been a hard year because you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. As uh, you got to feel the yeah. same, right? You feel the weight of the world, and you're trying to do the right thing, and you're trying to do the right thing for your staff, and trying to get all the right messages out there. And you just, it's just, you wake up, you try to do the work, and you go to bed, and you wake up in the middle of the night and think, what did I miss? And so, I think it's been a hard year. For for all of us. And, and I don't know that we're that different because even folks who have been at home and been isolated, that's been the hard year yeah. too, right? It's just been a hard year. It's absolutely wonderful to think that we are starting to emerge from the pandemic and you can feel, you can feel the momentum. And every time something gets pops up, like when I read this stuff in Springfield, I was down in the Ozarks this weekend, I passed through Springfield and I was like, Man, I, I just, we just don't want to go back there again, right? But thank you for asking. I think for all of us, it's been a really hard year. I think Hawkeye, I'm seeing him, watching him say yes. Um, but uh, we're, all, we're all COVID recovering, and we're going to be recovering for a while, I think. Okay, two really quick questions because we have a hard stop today um, that we're not going to meet that. But um, a lot of people are asking about the Delta variant um, and in particular, breakthrough infections. They're wondering about here at the hospital, just out in general. Can you speak a little bit to the Delta variant, breakthrough infections, and if the vaccinations work? So, Hawk, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, I will. I, I think what we know about um, the current epidemiology, uh, the current prevalence of the variants, uh, and again, that is not real time updated, but usually it's, it's a week behind just uh, really for anything, influenza, what, what have you. But I think what we know is that the Delta variant prevalence is increasing. Uh, it will probably soon take over um, even the, uh, the alpha variant. So I think you have to assume that if you have an infection right now in the United States, more than likely you are gonna either have the alpha or the Delta variant. What for breakthrough infection, we don't know specifically because really individually, it's not gonna change what we do for a patient. If they come in with the infection, they're gonna get remdesivir. If they meet the criteria for steroids, they're gonna get steroids in any of those other uh, therapeutics that we have. And of course, the anticoagulation, the blood thinner. So individually, it's not gonna matter. It's more of an important issue uh, epidemiologically on the greater stage, what is the prevalence in your community. Uh, there isn't much information about the Delta variant. Certainly there's more about Alpha because it's been around longer. But what we do know is that you are still protected from the Delta variant if you get vaccinated. Your uh, whole spectrum of disease, the range of illness that you will have is much, much reduced if you get vaccinated, including your risk of going to the hospital, severe, severe disease and death is much more reduced if you are vaccinated. So there may still be a uh, breakthrough vaccination, but you are at greater risk of having that severe disease if you are unvaccinated, even against the Delta variant. The vaccines we have right now really look to continue to a, induce a really good immune response, even against that Delta variant. Yeah, I think the vaccines look great. I think the data is beginning to come out, even within India and other places, that the Delta variant is clearly more transmissible it's probably not more deadly per se. It's just you're going to have more people have it, so you have more deaths because of that, because of its transmissibility. 
All right, last question goes to Mary Lee from Skidmore who says, I love this program. You are my source of truth. Thank you, Mary Lee. We appreciate that very much. She's a little bit confused, however, about attending indoor events that are fully open without distancing or masks. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. is vaccinated. Her question is, can I safely go to church, go to restaurants, go to stores, attend group meetings? Yeah, that's a great question. It is a really hard one too, Hawk. And I think here's the things we've been saying all along. If you're ever feeling uncertain about it, if you feel like the crowd is, is there's a lot of people and you're just not comfortable, just put a mask on. That is okay. The CDC has said if you're vaccinated, you can go indoors and you can not have a mask on. Um, we have not ado adopted that here in the, the health system in our administrative spaces, um, and, and clearly not in clinical spaces. And I, again, I don't think we're going to in clinical areas anytime soon. But I think that um, it, it, it a little bit is just your risk tolerance. You know, you, you can still get COVID-19 and you can still spread it to others, even when vaccinated, although the risks have gone down a lot, um, you can still spread it to someone else. So you have to ask yourself two questions. A, am I willing to get it at all? B, am I willing to take the risk of transmitting it to someone who's not been vaccinated? Do I, and, and do I think that's a significant risk in my life? And if those questions bother you or, you or you're not sure of the answers, then A, wear a mask, or B, don't go to a crowded space indoors. But if you feel very comfortable in the rest of your life and who you're in contact with and who you could potentially spread to, because you may well be asymptomatic, because most of the patients we've had who are vaccinated, who come in and COVID positive, we're, we're catching on admission screening, they're all almost all of them are asymptomatic. So, if, if I think it's I think it's all about your risk tolerance and it's a bit of your own personal calculus. But from the CDC standpoint, they'd say it's OK. Hawk. Yeah, I completely agree um, from the pure infection and immune response uh, standpoint. You will be protected. Now, you have a little bit less protection with the vaccine uh, against the Delta variant compared to that original uh, isolate that they made the vaccine to but you still have very excellent protection that's going to protect you uh, against that whole spectrum of disease, including severe disease. Your risk of transmitting to, to others as well is significantly reduced with the vaccines. So that's on the science, the, uh, the pure interaction of the infection and your immune response. I think more importantly, just like you said, Steve, is what is your ability to tolerate risk? What are the benefits and the risks of doing those things? Um, and certainly we know that a lot of people are continuing to be uh, anxious or have concerns about doing those large indoor group meetings, uh, which I think is, is fully reasonable after what we have been through this past, you know, 15, 16 months. Mira, how are you guys, what are you thinking about as far as the city goes? What's Rex Ar Archer thinking too about people who are not, or who have vaccinated and going inside? You know, we followed all of the guidance as well, largely if you are vaccinated. It, it really is an area of comfort. I've seen a lot of people who are still wearing their masks at the mm -hmm. local giant box store. I won't advertise for any, but <laughs> I know my mother does all the time too. And so we really think that balance is what's most important going forward, doing what you can to, to stay comfortable, and then making sure largely what we started with, encouraging everyone else, that, that middle group that's on the fence, to go ahead and get vaccinated. My, that is absolutely so true. Hey, tomorrow, and this is why you got to make sure you're safe, we're going to hear from more long haulers. Daniel Freeman is a chaplain here at the health system. He has been suffering from his bout with COVID-19 for a very long time. You're going to hear his story tomorrow. Uh, be prepared. It's, 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 it's gut-wrenching. He's going to also share his story along with Amber Stiles, who is an employee here at the health system and risk management. She's one of our best folks. Um, both had COVID-19, uh, and they have different stories, but both have suffered long-haul symptoms, something you don't want to have. And Hawkeye, the way to do it is to stay safe. Final thoughts from you today. Yeah, uh, you know, thank you to our guests, uh, Mayor Quentin Lucas. That's, he's out on the street. He, he <laughs> is engaging with the public. All throughout the pandemic, he has tried to do the right thing. Uh, you know, he has a lot of influences uh, that he has to take into account, a lot of different things, economics. Certainly, he's always tried to make the most uh, health conscious decisions for the health of the community. So I applaud you for that. You. Otherwise, we will continue to give the messages, continue to get vaccinated. This will protect you. Um, we know the variants are out there. Uh, they are only becoming more prevalent. So the way to protect yourself and your loved ones and your friends is to get vaccinated. Mayor, final thoughts from today. You know, a few things. One, people of Kansas City, people of the state of Kansas, the state of Missouri, I'm proud of you. 
We have been through a lot together, and I know there is more work ahead getting folks vaccinated, but perseverance has been what we've seen over this last year. So pat yourselves on the back for making sure we're keeping others safe and making sure we go through these additional steps to keep people safe long term. Yeah, well, thank you for your service very much, and uh, we so appreciate your leadership, and, and we can't wait to see more great things for you because it's it's been terrific, and you've done a great job. So we've said we're recovering from COVID. Remember, that is not the same thing as recovered. You don't want to think it's over when the game's still being played. And um, the Delta variant and other things are out there. What we want you to do is to stay, stay safe. And we know how to keep you safe. So don't be shy. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Instead, look forward to the rest of your life and live it safely with a COVID vaccination. We're back tomorrow. When you're part of the Made Up News Network, what you are really listening to is the Ruries, the rumor reporters. <laughs> rumor reporters don't report facts, they report rumors. And the problem with rumors is they aren't scientific information. It's not stuff that's based in science. Whoa, whoa. I, mean, I think it's all about where you want to get your information. Are you getting it from Facebook posts and TikTok, or are you getting it from the FDA, the CDC, other uh, physicians who know what they're talking about? I know that certainly if I got diagnosed with cancer, I'm not going to go to TikTok and look to see what somebody says about what do I do now and what do I get for chemotherapy. So I, I think you have to understand where is your source of information. At some level in life, you have to distinguish between that which is made up and that which is rumors, rumor reporters. Don't listen to the rumor reporters because they're not going to guide you based on science. They're going to guide you based on fear. But what we've tried to do in this program and we continue to do is to talk about the intersection of faith faith, hope, and science. But at the heart of each of those expressions is honesty and integrity, because we think ultimately that keeps you safe.